Okay, so here is your finished painting. How do you get to this point? Well, we're going to start with the very first few steps uh, that you should accomplish on day one of painting. Um, in order to get here, it'll take you a few days, but the very first is going to be a very simple procedure. Uh, and I'll show you what that might look like when you're done on day one. And that's just right here underneath. So the painting that you see on the left is a painting that is finished after day one. We call what day one is, is just simply blocking in all the color. And you can see that uh, the finished Mona Lisa on the right has a lot more detail. The colors look a lot different. It's just a finished painting, so it's going to look better. Uh, the one on the left is just simply trying to get the shapes of the final painting in place and to be able to get the color somewhat uh, accurate. But really, the first day, uh, which is the painting on the left, is all about blocking in large parts of color and to get the painting from top to bottom one whole coat of paint on. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start that with a fresh canvas, what you will actually start yourself on day one and go through the process. So first things first, you have your canvas. Uh, it's got your drawing of your painting there. I know that this is just a demonstration for the Mona Lisa, but some of you are going to have uh, up to six or seven different types of painting. The same idea is the same. Day one, you're just blocking in the large shapes, large design, the, the image in the middle or the figures on the sides. You're just trying to get a general uh, sort of uh, blocking in of all the big shapes and trying to get the color about the right uh, value and the right shade. Um, I'll show you what I'm working with, which is what you should have. You have your four colors. I have my medium right here with the egg yolk. I have a little bit of water to clean my brush. And I'm using a palette here, but you guys will be using a gray palette sheet, um, which is a little bit bigger and is actually just as good and shouldn't have any problems with it. Um, I will go ahead and go back to the painting here. To start, I'm going to try to uh, do the top of the painting. Uh, whenever you're doing a picture, you always want to start with what the background of the picture is and then work your way forward. So Mona Lisa is front and center. Uh, she's in the foreground or she's closest to me. I'm going to be starting with whatever's in the background. And I'm not doing anything other than just blocking in those large areas to color them and to create borders for where things are and the shapes that they are. Uh, so I will go ahead and mix a little bit of white because my background is just a lighter color. So here I'm going to start with just getting a little bit of medium, put it right in the middle and then dabbing my white. And this is a really wet consistency. This is good. This is what I'm looking for. It's a little yellow and that's because of the egg yolk, but that'll actually go away over time. But that's what I want to do to start and I'm going to just paint the background of the Mona Lisa to just start blocking in my colors. And again, I'm not concerned about detail. I'm just brushing it on. I'm moving a little faster than I think I would like you to move. I think it's perfectly fine to move at about this speed right here. You don't want to get too messy or sloppy and cause a mess, but you're also not moving so slow that you're overly detail oriented here. This is all about Big picture, big ideas, big shapes. You're not worried about details. You just want to have the picture 
start to slowly come together. And it starts with these general shapes that make up the picture. So that's just my background sky. And since I'm using this light color that's really just white with a little bit of medium or that egg yolk mixture, I'm going to go over the whole picture and see, compare it to what I'm using to help me paint my picture. And I'm going to find any other light areas that I can still use this paint since it's mixed and it's, it's ready to go. Um, if I look at the finished Mona Lisa, it's pretty light up here and that's what I did my background first. It has some lighter areas here. Her skin and faces are lighter, her hands. There are some lighter parts here. So because that's where I want to go in the end, I can go ahead and just start blocking in those light areas as well. So I'm going to just paint her face. Notice how it's perfectly fine. I'm going all over the drawn in areas of her eyes, her nose, her mouth. The pencil should stay perfectly fine underneath and it'll be visible to you for working in the details later. As I'm painting, whoops, I am having to add a little more medium and a little more paint and I want to keep my palette clean, but keep enough mixture of paint on the palette so I can have a pretty good amount of paint, about that much at all times. Not more, not less, not any thicker. I'm looking at my picture constantly as I'm painting to make sure that I'm getting the paint in the right areas. I know for certain that what I'm doing right now is not going to be exactly what the finished painting looks like. I'm just blocking in large areas knowing that the next couple days I might have to make corrections, I might have to fix areas and that's okay, that's just part of the process. Get her hands here. You want to get in inside the lines as much as you can because you, you don't want to create too much work for yourself in, in later steps, but the general idea is to just block in the colors. Okay, so my lighter areas are pretty much Done. I'm going to add a little bit of color to my white mixture here to start coloring in the background more and that will include the mountains in the background. They may not look like it but behind Mona Lisa is actually a little bit of mountain range. So I just took a little bit, a little bit, I would say no more than just about that much and just mixed it in and, and gave it a pretty good blue, light blue color. I'm going to put a little more white in there because I didn't want it to be that dark. A little bit of medium. And so I just created light blue. I used the paint that I mixed earlier and just added a little blue to it to give it that blue color. And I want to, again, block in the background. These mountains are not going to probably be this exact color and that's fine. I'm trying to get them to be somewhat close to the final color but that's not important. It's about the right darkness that's important too and again I'm just blocking in the area. I'm coloring it in so that later on I can fix it and make it more detailed to the way I want it. I'm looking around the painting at anywhere that I can use this light blue color so that I can just use my materials well and not waste. 
And looking at the final picture of Mona Lisa, I think I'm going to add a little bit of blue here. Uh, I think there's a little bit of water in the background. I'm going to add a little blue here on her dress. It's important not to be worried or overly concerned with painting at this time. It's really about just going for it, getting the color on the canvas. And moving quick enough so that your painting has an overall feel that it's unified in color and and how you're moving your brush because if you're hesitating too much and being very indecisive meaning unable to make a decision and just go for it your painting will look that way it'll look sort of the mood that you were in when you painted it I'm looking at my finished Mona Lisa and making decisions what I want to do next so there's a lot of red and blue and I'm going to start blocking in the darker colors now. Uh, my palette looks like this. And notice how I'm mixing light and dark blue in there and that's fine. I'm going to now show you what the finished Mona Lisa looks looked like one more time. Sort of compare it to where I'm at here. Finished one. Again, notice how this is much darker than the background. That's okay. I have a lot of dark up here. These details and this change in color, that happens at the end. Right now, I just want to be able to identify where the mountains are so that later on, I have something to work with and then add or subtract to the shape and size and the color. Um, I'm going to add this mountain here and some of this land over here uh, in this area and then start to get some of this red in here and then work on her darker outfit. So to mix some of that really dark blue I'm just going to dab in my ultramarine blue and that's pretty dark that's a good color. If it's not exactly what you think, you can always try it on the canvas and then add or a little bit of blue to make it darker or white to make it lighter. If I wanted to make this darker, I just get some blue, not a lot, and just slowly add. If I want to make it lighter, I would get some white and I can take away from how dark it is just by adding that white. You want to be very conservative with your materials, meaning you don't want to use more than you have to and err on the side of using less. Let's go here. I'll scoot this over. So, I'm going to go to that darker blue color and start blocking in her gown. I'm trying to 